My name is Shadi Ladigbo, and I am an under 40 CEO. The African Renaissance. The concept that the African people and nation shall overcome the current challenges confronting the continent and achieve cultural, scientific, and economic renewal is here and with young men and women taking the lead. Some call them the new school heroes. We call them under 40 CEOs. Shadi Ladipo attended the University of Lagos where she read English language and literature. Even though a contact on LinkedIn seemed to believe that Shadi is most comfortable with event management, her specialties include negotiation, branding, public relations, concept development, public presentations and speaking. Shade is a co-founder of Enough is Enough Nigeria, a no-holds-barred co-host on a popular radio show and a global shaper at the World Economic Forum. Shade Ladipo is the CEO of Avienti Limited. All right, welcome to Under 40 CEOs, Shade. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, Shade, you attended University of Lagos uh, yes, between 2001 and 2006, I believe. Yes. Um, you studied English language and literature. Yes. Um, what were your ambitions as a child, and why did you choose that course of study? Um, well, first of all, a lot of uh, people in my family wanted me to study law. Ah. So I did uh, do a one-year diploma in law mm -hmm. before um, I went to English. And, and that was because law wasn't really my passion. Mm -hmm. uh, people in my family thought I would be perfect because, I, mm -hmm. of course, I used to talk a lot. <laughs> I used to argue a lot. So I was like, oh, law is perfect for you. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, God always just has his way. So mm -hmm. um, I did one year. So I have a, one, I have a diploma in law, oh, in wow. general law. Nice. And then I moved to English language. Mm -hmm. And I love English because I love to talk. There was a time when I was like um, 12, I read the dictionary from top to bottom. I don't know wow. why. I don't know, I can't remember what it was there, but <laughs> I did, I know I did that. I always told myself I would, you know, work on CNN, because I, I thought that was all I needed to be, to talk. Mm. You know, it was later I realized there's so many other things you can do mm. to, you know, to talk and, you know, be expressive. Okay, now you um, went and read French language <laughs> from the Université Double May Calavi. That was in 2007. Would you say you just have a thing for languages and possibly culture? I mean, I've always, yes, had a thing for culture when, you know, I realized I loved to travel. Um, so after University of Lagos, uh, my friends and I decided, you know what, let's take out a year before NYSC and try and learn French. We didn't want to learn French in Nigeria, in Lagos, because, you know, you would come back home and you would speak English again. The day after we, we graduated from Unilag, the next day, me and three friends, we went to Benin Republic and just went to, just, wow. just to look around. We wanted to just see if we really wanted to do it. So we went to the school, and then when we got there, we got a place. We didn't even know we, we, we would do that, so, but we, we found a place when we got there, and we rented it out, and then we came back to Lagos uh, the next day, and a week later, we took all our stuff and we went back. Wow. So for a year, we had an apartment near the beach. It was the best time of my life because Bene is such a simple and relaxing place. Mm. I had such a great time. I learned a bit of French, and I made new friends, and I learned so much about the um, Francophone culture, which mm. even though they're so close to Nigeria, so, but they're so different. So it's just mm. an amazing time. According to available records, um, it says you've held just two salaried jobs ever. One was with um, an advertising firm, which you held for about seven months. The other was with some event management company, which where you held a position for about 10 months. Would you say that you're uncomfortable in paid employment? Actually, no. The advertising company was, um, it was really just like an internship, really. Mm. That was one of the first few jobs I had got just after I came out from Unilag, so I didn't have experience. So it was really just um, the owner of the company saying, you know what, come on board, come on board, and just gain some knowledge. And they saw that I, because I had a bit of a, um, experience before then uh, in copywriting, so they knew that I had a background in advertising somewhat, and then my English background. So it was a good fit for me, but I wanted a job that was going to make a lot more money, and I wanted a job that was going to be more fulfilled. Everywhere that I have worked, and I haven't worked for a long time, it's mainly because I wasn't, I, did, I hadn't found my passion there. You know, I was there, but I wasn't waking up every day with a smile on my face. 
So I don't mind working for someone. I actually enjoy it. But I have to be happy for you to see the consistency and sustainability that I would give in the job. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so you've had the smile on your face since 2010 now when you launched Avienti. Yes. Um, meeting planning, um, event management, and um, destination management. That's yes. what you do. But please do tell me more about Avienti. My last paid employment was 2009. And after I, did, after I, I, I stopped that, um, I went with two of my friends. I know you know them, Debola Williams, Shude Jidongo, mm -hmm. and other friends, Martin Zacha. All four of us, we traveled, we went to Egypt, went to Kenya, we went to Nairobi, we went to Seychelles. Oh, wow. For like two weeks. We just, cheapest flights, I, all the money I had saved, I used it on that. And I came back to Lagos, I was broke, but I knew I wanted to start my own travel company. Yeah. Um, but I didn't, I didn't know it was going to be travel. I thought it was going to be events, because events was where I was coming from, and everyone was like, should I just do events, since you already know events? Mm. But events was not my passion. But I just registered my company as a semi-events company. And I did a few events uh, while trying to get my feet wet with travel. So when I started Avienti um, in 2009, it was still an events company. Then 2010, I destroyed it and I rebranded and I restart. I restarted it again and I now said I wasn't doing events anymore. It was going to be strictly destination management. So I'm not mm -hmm. a travel company. I don't sell just tickets. We sell you a destination. So you tell me, oh, Shadi, I like the beach. Shadi, I want to go for a holiday with my kids. Then I will tell you destinations that fit that thought in your head. Mm -hmm. That's what Advienti does. And then we take care of the logistics from the beginning of the of the, of the planning of the destination till the end. So till you come back to Nigeria, you are in our hands. It says on your LinkedIn profile that you oversee um, fundraising planning and implementation. Now, what's your typical thing to raise funds for? Avianti started very, very organically. I literally mm. started with zero. Like I said, I traveled the first year, I came back and I was broke. Mm. I didn't have a laptop, I didn't have anything. So I had to raise money. So mm. the first way I raised money was I did um, I did jobs, because I was coming from event management, a lot of people, the kind of person I am, I'm 110%, so a lot of people knew mm. me and they were like, oh, shall I do, do this for us, do this for us? So I did a few things here and there, and I made some money, I bought my laptop, I bought my first internet modem, and I had my mm. first staff in 2010. Wow. And that's how I started. So every time I make money, it goes back in. So we've had to, at different times in the growth of Avienti, we've had to raise money for projects, for big projects, uh, office in Abuja, for instance. We have two offices in Lagos, one in Abuja. So we've had to raise money at different times because we've never had external funding before. I've never had capital given to me by an investor. Not because I don't want to, mm. but because, I don't know, I'm just like, you know, like a lot of women in business, we're cautious. We're not, we don't take as much risk as men do. Mm. So that's probably why I haven't open up my business to investors because, you know, just thinking, okay, you know, let's take our time, mm. <laughs> you know. Mm. So with my kind of network that I have, I've been able to keep, you know, people around me that are very instrumental when I need to raise funds for things. Now, you're co-founder for Enough is Enough Nigeria. Um, what was the organization set up to achieve? And have you recorded the kind of impact that you wanted to achieve from, from the get-go? When we founded Enough is Enough, we knew at once that we would not be able to run it. Mm. So the, immediately we founded it, we literally set it up with an, with an executive director, and we both backed out. Enough is Enough now has funding from Bill Gates Foundation. They have huge funding. They've just been running, but we're not part of it. And for me, that's a success story, because if I had been part of it, it probably would have been slow, because at the point where we founded it was just at the time when I was setting up a VNC. So I knew that I would not be able to run both, but I knew it was a passion of mine. I've always had a passion for activism and advocacy. So I knew that it was something I wanted to be a part of, but I knew I couldn't run it. But that doesn't stop me from starting it. You can have great ideas. You can even set up those great ideas. You don't have to be the one to run those great ideas, though. Mm. Don't limit yourself and think, oh, I must be the one to do it. Mm. I must be the one to execute it. You don't have to be the one to execute it. Mm. Start it, and if you realize that you will fail because you don't have the time, Hand it over to someone else. There's no shame in it. It's, you will get more ideas. Don't mm -hmm. think, oh, the idea will never come, another idea will never come back. Mm -hmm. Trust me, where that idea came from, another will come. So Enough is Enough has recorded immense success, I wouldn't lie to you. But I'm so glad that I wasn't part 
of that process at that, uh, to, that, to, to this point because I probably would have slowed it down. So now I look from the sidelines and I'm like, yes. <laughs> now, Shade, you present on television and you co-host a radio show and you're quite notorious for <laughs> not uh, sugarcoating, you know, on certain issues and, and all of that. Now, you're Yoruba. And yes. Yorubas are known to be one of the most diplomatic, maybe the most <laughs> diplomatic tribe from out of Nigeria. Yeah. And why are you so different? <laughs> <laughs> I've always been very expressive. I started radio when I was in my year one in Unilag. A lot of people don't know, when I was in the University of Lagos, I wanted to do radio, but I didn't get any paid opportunities. Now, when you were talking about, oh, I, 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 I spent 10 months in an advertising agency, the places where I spent the most time were places where I was not being paid a dime, because those are the places where my passion was. So I started radio from the I will say from the bottom. <laughs> I started radio <laughs> from Echo FM. That's why I started in 2001, 2002. And I didn't get paid until maybe six months, and then I just got, got paid a paltry, paltry sum. I moved from there to Brilla FM, Brilla FM. And now I, I was moving because I was gaining different things from the different stations. Mm. None of them were paying me per se because I was still a newbie. I started getting paid when I got to Unilag FM. Now, when Unilag FM wanted to launch, they were looking for students who were presently in Unilag and who had experience in radio. So they, 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 so they, they were asking around and they were like, oh yeah, Shadi Lightbo is, you know, she's on, because I was on Metro FM at the point as well. So they, they said, oh, she's on Metro FM. So I was now working Unilag FM. I was, I was the first staff for Unilag FM. Really? First, the first set voice. of staff. I was one of the first, first four okay. on air in Unilag FM. We did that and then I had my own radio show again, a separate you know, independent production that was being aired on Cool FM, Ray Power, nine stations around Nigeria. It was called XG. Mm. You know, all this was a time before social media was so, what, what it was. <laughs> so a lot of people didn't really know. But that's the kind of experience I've had on radio. I've, and then I have mm. production experience. I can produce a radio show. My experience is spanned over almost 10 years in radio. Wow. I have done a course at the Federal Radio Commission, FRS, or FRCN. Mm -hmm. You know, so my background is, and then I've done TV channels, television, you know, um, Robin Mines. I was a host, co-host and host for Robin Mines for almost two and a half years. So I learned how to speak clearly. I learned how to speak articulately. I love radio mm -hmm. and I like being able to say it as it is. So when I got the um, opportunity to join Smooth FM, I'm saying, yeah. And then the show, there wasn't really a direction to the show until I came on board. And then the show now became the, the show that tells celebrities as is. This is Under 40 CEOs. With her most recent appointment as Executive Director for We Connect International, Shadi helps women-owned businesses succeed in global value chains. She is known to be a strong advocate for women's rights and empowerment in Nigeria. There's this um, tweet that you pinned to the very top. Um, permit me to quote it. Um, when a woman works hard, a man with money is a bonus, not a ladder to upgrade. Why is this quote so important? <laughs> I think it represents everything I am right now as a woman. Um, it's very important. Um, I support women in business. I'm, I'm presently, I'm the executive director of We Connect International in Nigeria. And what we do is we identify women-owned businesses, we, we train them, and then we connect them to the international value chain. Mm. I'm of the strong opinion that a strong woman has nothing to do with how much money she's making, has nothing to do with where she's working, but about her self-confidence. When a woman is self-confident, she understands that she doesn't need somebody else to be self-confident. She's self-confident on her own. And it's important because women have been um, made to feel that they need someone else before they can be complete. Mm -hmm. You need to go into a relationship, whether it's a business relationship, whether it's a, it's, a, it's a love relationship, go into a relationship as a complete person. So, it's important for me to tell women it's okay to be strong. It's okay to be independent-minded. The word independent has been thrown around so people think, oh, independent means when I'm driving my car and I, I have my own house. No, that's not what independent means. 
It's independent minded. It's the mind, which means that you understand that you are complete in yourself. Amazing. <laughs> now, let me go back to 2007. You were um, chosen as one of the 101 young Africans um, to represent Nigeria at the annual African Business Leaders uh, Forum. Yes. That was in Accra, Ghana. Yes. That, that's a really big deal. It was great. Mm. Tolo Glesi was on that trip with me. Mm. He was also chosen. He was mm. my seatmate. We, we sat down next, next to each other. You know, people like Tosin Bokna was, mm. was on that trip. Mm. I think that was one of the first few times that I got so close to power, I realized, oh my goodness, it's not, you know, it doesn't burn you. In fact, go as close as you can, look mm -hmm. at it in the face and be like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that was it. So it was such a great yeah. experience for me. And it was um, one of the first few things that happened for me um, around that time. I got picked to do a lot of other things around that time as well. And it just really upped my confidence and then increased my portfolio for what I wanted to do in life. You've been a global shaper with the World Economic Forum since 2011. Yeah. Now, what do you typically do at the Global Shapers uh, Forum? I mean, the Global Shapers Forum is um, it's somewhat under the World Economic Forum. So what happens is um, I'm, there are different um, global shapers in different cities. So I represent Lagos and I represent Nigeria at World Economic Forum events. We do development work in our community. So we have projects we do, health projects, educational projects, arts and culture projects. The mindset behind this is that the World Economic Forum, they realized that they needed to identify young people who were doing great things in their cities. Mm -hmm. And that these young people in 5, 10, 15 years, these are the people that are going to be ruling the world. Mm. So they want these people to have access to people in power. So that's why they give us access to come for World Economic Forum events where we, where we meet all the world leaders. Mm. So they want us to get used to power, per se, mm. <laughs> while still making change and doing what we do already in our communities. You've received numerous awards. Mm. Leap Youth Excellence Awards. Nominated. Future Awards nominee for Best Use of Goodwill. You were also a Future Awards Ambassador. Yes. Now, what do these awards, accolades, nods, recognitions, what do they mean to you? I don't uh, do anything for any awards. I, they mean absolutely nothing to me. Because um, I'm, um, I'm not about that kind of recognition. I'm just about um, doing the work. I've worked with the Future Awards as a volunteer. I worked with them for five years when they first started the Future Awards. So um, that I'm a, an ambassador is only, is only a testament to the fact that I have just been part of the family for so long. Mm -hmm. In fact, it was when I was nominated for Best Good of Goodwill, that was the only first and only nomination I got with the Future Awards, because after then I started to volunteer for them, and I couldn't be nominated. There's nothing wrong when someone does, but that should never be the reason why you do something. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm saying there's no award that can never mean anything to me. The only mm -hmm. award that they can give to me is the award of when we night die and we reach heaven and they say, it's time, this is it, your award, you have reached heaven. That's the award. <laughs> <laughs> what are those key challenges that you've had to overcome to make the strides that you've made so far? To get in the right, right team, I think has one of, been one of the biggest challenges um, that I ever had to um, work. I got a scholarship, a uh, Goldman Sachs scholarship in 2013 uh, the, at the, the Pan-African University. And after I finished that course, I fired everyone that worked with me because I realized I had made bad hires. You don't hire by bad people. You only just maybe just hire the wrong people. So I realized that and most of the people who I have hired since then are still with me now because I learned what I should be looking for and what I shouldn't be. Uh, me and every woman in business, is, we have the same issues. I hate numbers. Social media. I have no idea what to do when it comes to some operations. You know, so there's so many things that we are not strong at. Um, but how do you toe the line to make sure that you are, in, you are on top of that? at the same time still doing you. You have to go for financial management classes for non-financial managers. You need to know how to run every faucet of your business. And most women, we struggle with that. So for me, the solution is sharpen the saw. That's the seventh rule of highly effective people. Mm. Sharpen the saw. Take out time and go for courses. Go for 
classes, go for courses, and learn about the different aspects of running a proper business. How would you describe your leadership style? One of the things I also learned from Pan African University when I did the course was I made my company to run without me. That I, by 2014, my company decided to run without me. So I can be out of town for a whole month and no one is any better, no one is any wiser. They, in fact, most times I'm, I'm, not, I'm in the office sometimes once a week. So because of that, it gives my team some certain level of um, responsibility and independence. And so I'm also trying to sell the entrepreneurship. Now, entrepreneurship is when you make your staff feel like they're also owners, which is a, an idea that I, I learned from Richard Branson. All right, Shadi, so what would you say is the biggest letdown that you've experienced in your career so far? My life is such a way that everything that's happened to me in every single part of my life, it's not ever, it's always been a means to an end. Something has always been to the means to an end or it's always been a catalyst for something else. So I've never had any disappointment. I've been, maybe there were times where I thought A and B should happen. But then, uh, I officially reinvented Aventi in 2010. Um, so it's six years, actually, this year. And I thought, oh my goodness, I should be making more money than I am making. Because I know a lot of travel companies that started when I started and are done. You know, so instead of comparing myself and thinking, oh, I kind of should, I should be, uh, you know, making as much money, why don't you look at where you've, how far you've come? So, that would have been a disappointment, but then I, I looked at the context. The context I was looking at it was wrong. I was comparing myself, which I shouldn't even do in the first place, which I even don't do anymore. I just accept where I am, what I can do, and how I can be better. I don't compare myself anymore to anyone or anything. It's a futile waste of time. I mean, there are a few things that have happened in my business where I'm like, okay. But instead of it being a disappointment, it just became a lesson. Okay, this is what we do not do, because we, one of the things I teach my team is whenever there's an issue, find a way to solve it and then document that issue so that it never happens again in that context, maybe in another context. But if that same issue happens and we have this and that same thing happens, it means we didn't learn. This is under 40. CEOs. Shade's leadership style is relaxed and she places no real value on receiving awards. We know quite a bit about what makes this lady tick, but what does she love to eat? How does she love to dress? What is her favorite travel destination? It will be awesome to know these and more. All right, so I have a few quick fire questions for you. What do you love to eat? Uh, Dodo. How would you describe your style? Simple. What's your favorite brand to wear? Brand? I don't do brands. What's your favorite car to drive? Um, as long as it gets me from place A to B, I don't know. I'm indifferent. <laughs> what other CEOs do you currently look up to? Mo Abudu is a great woman to look out for. Um, Richard Branson, I absolutely love. Okay, considering you're in travel, what's your favorite travel destination of all time? Benin Republic. What's your favorite book of all time? The State of the Nation. What book are you reading right now? The Business at the Speed of Rema, written by Fisayo Kusoya. Finally, I'd like to know, Shadi, what makes you happy? I'm happy because I'm doing everything I've ever wanted in my life. Thank you for coming on Under 40 CEOs, Shadi. Thank you so much for having me. Right. <laughs> my name is Shadi Ladikbo, and you too can be an Under 40 CEO.